Hello and welcome to the film room. Shout out to my Cyclone fans. I'm excited to break down how Iowa State knocked off the number one ranked North Carolina Tar Heels in the Phil Knight Invitational. Part one is going to focus on what Iowa State did offensively that worked. Make sure you check out part two where we will break down what they did defensively that frustrated UNC throughout the game. Let's get into it. Offensively, Iowa State found a lot of success running this action called Spain. Spain's being run by so many people right now, especially in the NBA. I'm going to show you how it works and all of the counters that they got off this action to continue to score. You're going to see Caleb Grill set a screen right there for Rob, and he's going to go up and set the screen for the ball handler. You don't have to set that screen for the big, but this is how they get into it. And what's going to happen is you're going to see a three-man action. Rob's going to come up and he's going to set that screen right there. And these three guys are who are involved in this play. As a coach, I love to make things easy to remember. So the best way to remember Spain is this. Spain means ball screen, back screen. The big sets a ball screen for the ball handler, and then the bottom guard is going to set a back screen for the big, and then he'll pop to the top of the key. And from here, the ball handler just has to make the right read based on what the defense does. As Holmes comes off this first one, you can see his defender's late, and the big never comes over to help. Holmes sees that, gets straight downhill, and ends up getting a layup. The next time they run this action, everything looks the same from the beginning, but you're going to notice that Rob flips to the other side, and this is really effective because it confuses the defense and makes it hard to cover it the same every time. Holmes is going to notice that as he comes off Rob, that the big is sagged way off and not helping, and he sees that there's an opportunity to do what's called loading the gun, knocks a three-pointer down. Same play, different open shot. This basically turns into a chess match. The offense running the same play over and over, the defense trying to figure out a different way to guard it so that they can't get an open look. So as Lipsy comes off this ball screen, now you're going to see Caleb Love switch the ball screen to try and keep them from getting another open layup. This is why the back screen is so important. He sets the back screen, and you're going to see Rob wide open. And I even think Taman's looking in the right direction, and I don't know if he knew he was going to be that open because right there, he is wide open for a pass, and he should have hit him for a layup. He ends up missing it, ball gets kicked out, and they end up shooting a tough three. So they didn't score every time they ran this action, but as you can tell, they're getting wide open looks, which is what they want. So here they are, end of the first half, about to run the same play again to get the last shot. Everything is set up the same, and again, North Carolina tries to cover it differently. This time, Baycott's going to come over, and he's going to guard, but there's confusion, and Caleb Love is guarding him as well. That's going to give them an opportunity to get another wide open shot for Caleb Grill, who hit seven on the game and could have had his eighth right here, doesn't quite hit it. So when they start running this in the second half, what you're going to see on this first one is another flip by Rob, but the difference is now you've got Gabe on the same side as the ball handlers coming off, so now we're going to get another wrinkle of Spain. You're going to see the point guard do what's called snaking, and he's going to go back to the other side away from Gabe as he's popping out, and that's to create the space that they want. As he does this, Baycott has to pick up the ball handler, and we're going to create a mismatch for the post player as he rolls to the basket. The key to this whole thing is that Taman is patient. He lets Rob roll. Rob ends up getting a little point guard on him. They make a great pass, and he gets an easy layup. This one is an example of guys just making plays. So as Holmes comes off this to the left, he's going to see where Baycott's at and snake back to the right. Caleb does a great job and pops away from him. Holmes gets downhill. He's patient, under control. Baycott is going to sink, and Holmes just rises up and knocks in a floater. Now this next one was my favorite of the game and I'll show you why. As a coach, this was pure gold. You'll notice down at the bottom that there's three minutes and eight seconds left. At every four minutes in a college game, there's something called a media timeout. 
And so typically after timeouts, ATOs are usually wrinkles drawn up by coaches because they see something and they think that they can score off of what they've seen. It's basically like football coaches calling plays. I'm willing to bet that the assistant coach, Schmitty, saw this wrinkle and drew this up at the timeout and it ended up getting them a wide open shot. Every time they've run this play, Caleb sets the screen and Rob runs up into a ball screen, which is what North Carolina is anticipating. But in this play, Rob breaks it off and goes to the short corner and you can tell they had this drawn up because Holmes is already looking to throw him the basketball. He breaks off to the short corner, they throw a shot right to him, wide open dunk. Man, I love that. And here comes the shot heard around the world. This had Twitter and Instagram going crazy. They come off the Spain action, Holmes goes to his right. What you're going to see is his defender and Baycott come over to help to take care of the ball. And as Holmes comes off, he rises up to shoot it, realizes that he's being covered, throws it back to Caleb last second. A little wild to Pete Nance. Holmes got up in the air. Grill! Oh, goodness! A shot that will go down in Iowa State history. Make sure you check out part two of this video where we break down the defense. Thanks for coming through. We'll see you next time in the film room.